Greetings wrestling fans, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to do a quick review of Monday Night Raw. So here are my thoughts and opinions on the March 7th episode of Monday Night Raw and, my apo and apologies for my hair, I just had a shower. So we began with the triple threat tag team match, RK Bro, Alpha Academy and KO Rollins in a very, very good triple threat, triple threat match. You see, the way that they did the triple threat match, tag team match here, is how they should always do it. All three guys in the ring at once and they tag in their respected partners. Not that, not that crap that they that they did before, that anybody can tag anybody. Like that stuff is just dumb. This is how that you see how these triple threat tags turn out so good when you actually do them the right way? Because whenever they do them the wrong way, they always end up so messy. They always end up so messy and then you lose track of who's legal. So the way that they did it here tonight is how they should be handling it forever. They should never go, they should never change it back. This is how they need to do it. I was, I really wanted the Alpha Academy to retain because I feel like they deserve it because they've been like the most entertaining part of Monday Night Raw. But go figure, WWE always has to ruin the, the best things. They always have to take away the best things. RK Bro are the new Raw Tag Team Champions, so 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 I have to suffer more. Randy Orton with Matt Riddle, so yay, so yay for me, I guess. Now listen, I love Randy Orton to death, but Randy Orton gave the blessing to put over the Alpha Academy. I could only imagine how upset he be f that he that he feels. That now he that, that that all the hard work that he went through to build up the Alpha Academy to make them look like a legit team to now take the titles away from them. Like I don't think he would be very too pleased uh, with it because he went through a lot of effort because he likes Chad and he likes Otis. So I really wish he used his uh I really I really wish he uh spoke up and said something to Vince about it. But. It's what it is, unfortunately. So, th so Seth and KO don't have a path towards WrestleMania. By the way, they were in Cleveland, Ohio. So Dana Brooke, a Cleveland native, she she took on Tamina in a 24/7 title match, and Dana Brooke would merge victorious. And I know this made a lot of Alexa Bliss fans very salty. I know this. I know it made a lot of Alexa Bliss fans very salty, due to the fact that in October they were in they were in Columbus, Ohio, and Alexa Bliss lost to Charlotte Flair. So I know a lot of Alexa fans were not too happy that Dana Brooke won in her hometown when Alexa didn't. So yeah, Dana Brooke was able to defeat Tamina. And they seem to be uh, building up this whole romance storylines for Brooke and Reggie and uh, Tazawa and Tamina. You know, Byron Saxton says he loves romance. You know, he, you hear him say it on commentary how, how he loves romance. But yet, he can't stand when Miz and Morrison do it. And he also can't stand when Corey Graves does it with Carmella. What a hypocrite, right? What a hypocrite, right? So the Miz berates Cleveland in the next segment. He berates Cleveland. He berates his hometown because Jerry Lawler suggests that Cleveland should get a wrestle should get a, a WrestleMania one day, and the Miz basically says, "Nah, Cleveland doesn't deserve a WrestleMania," and that's what led the crowd booing him. And Logan Paul didn't seem to be too happy about it either. I wish Logan Paul could, would go back to his YouTube channel because no one cares about good old Logan. So the Dirty Dirty Dogs, the Dirty Dirty Dogs, they battled NXT Champion Bron Breaker and Tommaso Ciampa in tag team action. 
I am a really big fan of uh, the exposure NXT is getting here. I, I really am a fan of this. This is something that I feel NXT needs. You know, some good exposure. Because they didn't do it a lot with the black and gold NXT. They didn't get a lot of exposure out of NXT when they did the whole black and gold thing. Maybe it's because at the time, a lot of the NXT superstars were refusing to do it or, or call-ups or stuff like that. But I am a fan that NXT 2.0 is getting the uh, is getting the exposure that it needs. I'd love to see a Cora Jade appear on Monday Night Raw. I'd like to see Dakota Kai, Indy Hartwell. I'd like to see Indy Hartwell and Persia Pyrota, you know, challenge for the women's tag team championships. You know what I mean? You know, get the exposure out there. Get Io Shirai. To do a match with somebody on, on, on the main roster, you know, get the exposure out for the NXT for the NXT girls as well. So, yeah, I, I'm a fan of this. I'm a fan of uh, the NXT people, you know, getting a taste of what it's like to be on the main roster. And I and I and personally, like, I don't review a lot of NXT stuff nowadays. But I'm but, but from the, but from the clips and stuff that I've watched, I'm very very impressed with uh, Bron Breaker. I really like Bron Breaker from the from the clips that I watch in my spare time because I don't really review NXT because you guys can obviously tell. Sorry about that. So sorry about that. But yeah, but yeah. From what I've seen, I like Bron, and obviously I like Champa from from the days when I watched NXT. But but man. Good stuff. Break, Breaker and Champa won, where Breaker would hit um, a power slam, uh, a, a gorilla press slam to beat uh, Dolph Ziggler. Omos squashed Apollo Crews. I don't know what the hell's going on here. Why he? Why they're wrestling? Why they're having him wrestle heels? He, apparently, Apollo Crews might have turned face. I don't know. That, I'm not sure, for, I'm not 100% sure, but it, it is what it is. Omos squashed Apollo Crews. Edge cut a promo on AJ Styles. Edge thinks he's The Undertaker with the dark lighting. He thinks he's, um... He, he thinks he's The Undertaker with the dark lighting. So then we get to the match that actually kind of pissed me off. Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan battled Zelina Vega and Carmella, and if Rhea and Liv won, they would get added to the WrestleMania tag team match involving Team Boston Glow and the tag team champions. Like really? Like like really? You're just gonna add teams now? If you if you so you're just gonna add teams now to to, the, to this match? L listen, I love Rhea. I love Liv. I love them both. But I'm sorry, they do not deserve an opportunity. Sasha and Naomi challenge the tag team champions first. So now WWE is just making it even more obvious that Sasha Banks and Naomi are not going to win at WrestleMania. Just make, just get, just make it more clearer that Zelina Vega and Carmella, like with with, with more additional tag teams, you're going to have Zelina Vega and Carmella sneak their way to a victory in a multi-person match. And more importantly, after what happened tonight, it sounds like Zelina Vega might be on the verge of a face turn because Carmella was a tent was talking to Corey Graves and Zelina Vega got frustrated and she ended up getting planted with the Riptide. So, so it sounds like Zelina Vega might be on the verge of a little baby face run. Which honestly, I wouldn't mind you know, just give her a run in that role. If it doesn't work out, you can just always turn her back heel. Finn Balor battled Austin Theory. This didn't last long. Damian Priest would come out, cause a disqualification, setting up their feud. And then Kevin Owens, in the main event, he calls out the man that he wants to challenge at WrestleMania, but not in a match. Just in a special edition of the Kevin Owens show. He calls out Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know what? The only positive thing about this is that it's not a match. 
it's just a segment with it's just a segment which is something that I said WWE needs to do don't make it a match just make it a segment so does that mean Cody Rhodes is going to be Seth Rollins' opponent? Well, guess where Raw is next week? Jacksonville. And where do AEW mostly hold their shows? In Jacksonville. So keep an eye out. We might we might be hearing, Whoa! You're only smoking mirrors! So we might see Cody Rhodes after all. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not 100% confident. But I know I'm setting myself up for disappointment. But I think it'd be pretty cool if Cody Rhodes did appear next week because they're in Jacksonville. So anyway, that is it for this Monday Night Raw review. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that thumbs up. Comment your comment your opinions down below. Hit like and subscribe. And I will see you all next time.